What is up, guys? It is Stu, and it is another episode of the What the Fuck Gym Talk podcast, and I have 50% of best hour of the day, the, the better 50%. <laughs> Um, the better 50 I guess or 20 or 25%. Actually, technically, that's, that's 25%. It's, or 33, 33. It's, at, it's 33. Yeah, it's 33 now because Marcus is in there. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah. yeah. Jason, uh, Jason Fernandez, uh, CrossFit Rife, Virginia Beach, uh, seminar staff, bubbly, and people know who you are. We're just chatting because you guys have had a fun little, uh, a small seismic event in the CrossFit space <laughs> uh, with the, the price yeah. raise. And we, we don't always agree on everything business-wise. This is one thing I think we're still – we're very much on a similar footing with as far as our perspective on it. I kind of looked at it in three things. Like when I looked at all the bitching and whining that happened, it came down to we didn't like the timing. We – what I wrote it down. We don't like the price, the cost of it, and we don't believe there's enough value. What have they done to increase the value of it? Am I, have you seen – is there anything outside of that, that three scope that I'm missing? No, there's a small subset of people in there that are like, yeah, I get it. Move on, you know, but those are like the very small minority and the outliers. Um, but no, I, those are pretty much the three buckets of people. Yeah. How have you, cause you guys work exclusively obviously with affiliates. So this was like, mm -hmm. I had a, you know, I had a, a portion of my camp that, that, you know, we had a conversations about it and then, but for you guys, it's, it's everybody. So how you know, because obviously CrossFit HQ's got their megaphone and they're talking about it and everyone else has got their opinion. How, what did you guys do to address the clients that you work with? I mean, it, it was very short lived. I kind of immediately like reached out to everybody. I'm like, Hey, this functionally speaking, this means nothing to you. Like from a number standpoint, like this is uh in, if this was scientific data, it would be, um, statistically irrelevant when it comes to like actual dollars and cents. Uh, and I told everybody, I said, hey, for a second, separate how you feel about it and what it actually means to you. And then understand the differences between those two, because I understand how people feel about it. Like, listen, nobody likes a price increase, man, like ever. I don't care what you're doing. No, nobody's like, yay, this is great. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't mean anything financially to you, meaning listen, I'm not saying there's not outliers where $100 or $300 doesn't become a real budgeting fiasco. Like that's a real thing. Okay. But those are easy fixes, meaning you can do something about that. And so for the most part inside of our cohort of gyms and probably about 400 in there, like it was a non, it was a non-issue. I told everybody, it was like, Hey, you now, uh, here's what I told everybody. I don't believe it was ever a question that this was coming. The only two questions we needed to ask was how much and when, and now we know. So move on and how you feel about it. That, that's a different discussion to be had. Um, but I understand. I understand. I understand some of those other buckets too that, that you refer to, which is like, I understand how, how people feel uh, about the price raise, the time. I don't know that there's ever a good time for something like that. You know, I've had I've had members at my gym before like, Hey, well, now's not a good time. And I was just like, well, when is a good time? Like, when's a good time for me to come tell you that we're going to charge you more money. Right. Like, and the answer is never, you know? Um, so there's pros and cons to everything, man. And I think people, um, sometimes I think people like to be victims, but I, I do understand where people are coming from and I get, nobody likes it. However, I just don't, I really fundamentally, I don't think it matters. And I, and I don't, I don't mean that to be not empathetic, but, and we got more details, uh, yesterday in some of the town halls, which make more sense. Um, for some people, the timelines are different, all that kind of stuff. And regionally around the world, uh, currency rates, there's gonna be different price points. So they did address some of those things. Um, but it's like, do it or don't. I, I, I still think the value there is laughably low. Um, and, and that's separate from, do you like it? Right. And I think that's the, the conversation I'm having. I was like, I get you don't like it, but it's still a good deal. So. Yeah. And my, my daughter's six and I, she's at this phase now where I have to explain to her, I'm like, your feelings are valid. Are you, you're angry, right. you're upset, whatever your feelings are valid. However, you can't expect anyone to care about them. That, that you can't have an expectation there. And, and I, I've, I was watching your, the IG video where you were, you were doing that. You're like, guys, I don't think it really matters how you feel about it. And in my head, I'm like, 
I think he really wants to say, like, you're feeling so fucking, like, it doesn't matter. Like, happy, sad, it is what it is. Just, it, you know, price raise, comma, so what? Like, and now what? Not what, bitch about how right, you and that about was, it. Right. <laughs> That's kind of where I was going. It's just like, okay. I, and it's not to say, um, it's not to say that, like, your feelings aren't valid, right? Like, like to your point, right? They are valid. It also doesn't matter. Right? Like, you don't get a vote in how this works out. Meaning like you don't get a vote in, in the price tag that they give you. You get a vote on what you do with the price tag that they give you. And that was kind of my point. Uh, Newsflash kids, uh, Instagram stories is not where nuance happens if you guys were not aware. Um, so, and that was kind of, and I stand by what I said. I, I kind of regret the medium, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, but the whole point is, is like, what I want people to get away from is this victim mentality. Here's what I don't think people... It's all people are acting like like somebody did something to them. And it's like, this is just business, man. Like you, you probably have raised prices on your members. And if not, you probably do. Not I me mean, not knowing anything about anything, but it's it's probably at least a conversation to be had. And I'm like, it's just a natural thing. And one thing I think is like really, so how did we get to this point where everybody's so up in arms, right? I think that's like worth a conversation. And so if you think about what CrossFit was when Greg owned it, right? That was an impact centric business, meaning like Greg didn't give a shit about anything other than fighting the fight, right? Want to change the fitness space and he wanted to fight the large fights for affiliates. And because he was doing that and because because it was an impact driven company, like the, the, he didn't really need to do a lot for the affiliates. We'll come back to the license agreement, which is like, you were never promised anything other than the name. That's a different discussion. Um, so, but he, but they were able to, I don't get away is not the right phrase for that, but they were they're able to like do that because he was, you know, fighting uh legislature right he was fighting big soda right he was he was doing all these like big things and people were like yeah i get it man he's 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 doing it for the cause right and then post greg during the acquisition it's no longer an uh an impact driven company don't get me wrong they're they're trying to have impact but it is a financially driven company because they got private equity money and that private equity money needs to be made back right and, and it is what it is, right? So it, it can be a little bit of both, but Marcus, I was actually talking to Mo from uh, Beyond the Whiteboard, so I want to give him credit this. He's like, it's like we were, it's like we all, somebody bought our mom's house, right? you like, you live there, you grew up there, you had all these fond memories and somebody bought the house and they're renovating it and you don't like it. And it's like, well, it doesn't matter, man. Like they bought the house. They can do whatever the fuck they want with the house. They can literally you know? burn it down and piss on it if they want it. it, it, it <laughs> again, your feelings aren't va like your feelings are valid, but it doesn't matter because the next step still you still have to have an action step. You have to you have to take action on something. I'm in or I'm out. I'm right. gonna make more. But I uh, saw so you know you know I was in sin. There was like okay, so for those people that went from three k to forty five hundred, that's one hundred twenty five dollars a month. But even if you just look at like you know forty five hundred dollars a month, and so you've got this increase now. Forty five hundred a year, yeah. yeah. Forty. I'm sorry, four hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the hundred and twenty five dollar a month mark, going from three thousand to forty five hundred, that's that's like losing at a at a cheap gym. It's like losing a member. Have you ever lost a member in a month? Yeah. Did you survive? Did you survive? Yeah, you did. Like, and I get that some gyms are going up from the five hundred. Which, by the way, anyone who's been sitting around on like the real, real, real low rate because they've been there back in the day, it's like when you get pulled over by a cop. You should never be a dick because it's you a thousand points, the police that won. Like how many times have you sped and you didn't get pulled over? Anyone who's been right. riding on these low rates, there's a reckoning there. Like at some point, like the market's going to catch up point. to you. You know, even a Greg at some point would have, I think probably would have had to do something at some point. Um, what are your thoughts? At, you know, going back to that time and you and me were talking, we record, is it as simple as like, Okay, in Q1, or sorry, Q4, October, by the way, effective January, is it 60 days? Is it 90? Is it 120? Like, what's the magic number that people- I, I don't, I mean, I can I'll, I can speak to affiliates and I think I like, it's kind of the same thing, right? I think like HQ basically just runs a big gym. There's clients just happen to be affiliate owners. Um, 
like what we teach people is that obviously I, I don't I don't disagree with January right I actually do I agree with January um, where you can where we see people run into problems is if you start to get if the lead time starts to shorten up meaning like the the amount of time before this becomes a reality for me is inside 30 days which it was right at 30 days it, there tends to be an emotional reaction to whatever the to the change was. So for instance, like if, if, if you remember my gym and then I'm like, Hey, next it's currently the, the December 5th that we're recording this. If I'm like, Hey, January 1st prices are going up. You're like, well, that's my next billing cycle. Like I have no time to plan for that now versus had I told you, I don't know, early November, maybe sometime like mid October, there's really nothing that you need to do right now because nothing changes right now. It changes in the future. And now I have some sort of lead time to do that. So now would they still have people that would complain? Hundred percent. Like there's no there's no way around that. But but lead time matters from a standpoint of like how much of an emotional response does it elicit is where I think it starts to matter um, in a in a community that is already hyper emotional, right? So I think that is something that like I think forty five to sixty days is kind of a sweet spot. I, you can also you can also put it out too soon, or if you put it out yeah. too far in advance then people forget and then they're reminded again and they're like well you didn't do anything for this long why do we have to why do we have to take eat the increase now right you know you're fucked if you do fucked if you don't it just it's, it's bad <laughs> right. news there's just a bad right. news is always gonna it's it's bad news right it just you know yeah. um i uh i do think there's a level of resiliency that a business owner should accept that they likely need to have in order to do well. I mean, there's no winning at this game. I, I don't believe in business, but like there's a level of resiliency you need to be able to have. And when this is like not, if this is knocking people down to the point where this, this is fucking up their new year. Like they're like, this is making them upset. You know, I don't know. Do you think they'll ever release the numbers of how many people deaffiliated from this? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's going to be a lot to be honest. I don't, it might not be I any. Do not, I agree. like, I, agree I think 100%. it's going to be, I don't, I don't think it's going to matter to them. I think, I think it's a, I think it was, I mean, if, if I'm, if I'm them and, and, and I'm in that situation, like I'm probably doing the same thing, Yeah. right? I'm probably going to raise those the rates. Bottom 20%. Right. Uh, maybe, right. Maybe, but, but probably not. Right. Like you're probably not going to bleed the bottom 20%. You're probably going to keep high 90%, I think. Right. Because because again, the the because again, the financially speaking, it seems like a you know, like people are like, it's a hundred and twenty five percent increase. And I'm like, OK, percent wise, like you are correct. But that there's a totally different story if I'm talking about like actual numbers. Right. Like it sounds like a lot if you say they bumped it up, but it's like it's like, hey, my revenue went up 100 percent. I'm like, but you went from five dollars to ten. Like it's still not good. Yeah. Right. Like so I, I get it. I, I think. I think the battle there is is what I think it was the third bucket you brought up, which is the uh, kind value. of the perceived the value, right? So like, and again, going back to the the pre the pre acquisition, where like everybody kind of understood what the value was because it was that mission driven uh, company, right? And then now the company is is there to make profit, and and the and the value there there, and I and I do think they're doing a good job. I, I think they've I think they've at, affiliates are getting more than they've ever gotten, like ever hands down, right? They get cap, they're doing the summits at no cost, they're doing webinars all the time, like the regional reps are, are hammering away. Um, now, if people are not taking advantage of those things, and they don't find those valuable, well, that's that that is a perception that needs to be addressed, right? Like, how do you do that? I don't know, to be very honest, I do not envy the position that they are in. I think that is very tough. Uh, and it sucks. Um, but they have added value. Um, now, where where they where they have to deliver now is where because and this is not because I'm not saying that they have to do this, but like they said that they were going to do this is that, you know, they're like, hey, we're going to do these things. I'm like, well, that's now you're kind of on the hook for that, right? Like, and as a business owner, just like if I was going to roll that out to my gym, be like, hey, we're going to do all these things, and then I don't deliver, I have to understand that there will likely be consequences to those things. I, what those are, I don't know, um, and I do think many of the things that they're trying to do uh, make sense, right? Like now. I work for the company, full disclosure. However, I don't always agree with everything that they do. Right? Do you get an but I, I do on on this affiliate? 
Yeah. So full disclosure, I do, I do not pay affiliate fees. One day I will have to pay affiliate fees because it is highly improbable that I will work for the company forever and I'll pay my affiliate fees. I have no problem doing that. I do budget for affiliate fees and I just spend that money elsewhere. I typically spend it on the staff. Like we paid for everybody to take their level four this year, right? That would have been the equivalent of affiliate fee. Um, so, but again, I still think it's laughable. So I think that perceived value is, is the challenge, right? Because I, the, bec and it, it's a drastic change in how the company was operated in the direction, right? I mean, not that, not the direction, but like the intent behind it, right? And, and I, I don't want to poo-poo and say CrossFit is not an impact-driven company. Like it is absolutely, like that's what they're trying to do, right? Like uh, the, the team up there, like they're trying to do that. And I, this is where the nuance comes in, but like Greg didn't care where the money went. VC cares where their money goes, right? Like I, that's, I don't know how else to say that. Like you, we have to, there, we, we got money, we have to pay it back. Like that is just a fact of life. I'm sorry. Um, so that is a fundamental change. Now I do think, um, I do think that it's a, they're in a growth mindset, meaning like they're not trying to like strip it and flip it, uh, or any of that stuff. Like, I think they're, I think they're planning on trying to get their money via growth, right? Which is good, right? If you know anything about VC, like that's, that's best case scenario. The other option is not good for anybody. Um, so I, yeah, I just think there's some harsh realities that, that people just, um, they're, they're struggling with and I get it. But my point was when I made the social media posts is like, to your point was just like, yes, it sucks. But now what do yeah. you do? Like you have to do something now and what? And, and now you make the decision, which is like, do you choose to affiliate at the end of the day? We, it comes down to that. Like, are you going to pay it or are you not? Most people are going to pay it. Like I, I will, I am working on the presupposition that everybody's just going to get along, which the vast majority of them will. So then I basically just skipped to that step. And I was like, now what do you do? Right? There is a, there is a tremendous number of options available to you. Like, you and I could sit here and come up with no less than a dozen. It would take us not even three minutes on how you could navigate this and come out in the positive. That And that was my whole point. I wasn't trying to be insensitive, but the point is, is like, you're a business owner, man. Like emotions don't have a lot of, have a lot of like place here, dude. Like, I'm sorry. And I, I know people don't like that. Yeah. Uh, entrepreneurship in my opinion is just professional problem solving. That's, that's what Correct. Is, right. And this, this is a problem financially for some people. For others, it's a blip on the radar. It doesn't matter. They would never even notice, you know, it was on auto draft. They wouldn't notice that there was a difference in what was being taken out. Um, the value thing is interesting because unfortunately, I feel for most of these guys, what I kept hearing, the only word, and it's a word you and me fuck, I guarantee you hate it. I'm just, just making an assumption. They want, how, well, how is this going to get me more leads? How is this CrossFit going to get me more business? Like that's, I feel like that's the only value add there. said you could cap them to death and fucking... You know, I was talking to Andrew Charlesworth, and he's like, you know, I was like, dude, that incredible fucking video with that old black lady, I think from Atlanta, like doing the deadlift that you guys put out years ago. Yep. Incredible. Can you cut that down to nine by 16 fucking vertical for everybody and white label their, he's like, Stu, we did do that. There is literally media available for them. Correct. And I'm, so I, I, but nobody, I couldn't find, I, nobody talks about that, but I feel like the only value at any of these guys want is they want CrossFit to throw a bat signal up and send people in it. And that's when I'm like, at that stage, you need to pay significantly more than 45. Alex Ramosi would charge you $16,000 for 16 weeks of that. And you want, yeah, he's, you're going to pay $45,000 a year for that. Yeah. Yeah, you want right. Like if you're doing, if you're a pretty good gym, if you're a pretty good gym, you're talking about ten percent of your yeah. gross revenue, right? Like just, that's a four hundred thousand dollar a month, or sorry, uh, a year gym paying ten percent of their revenue for lead generation. Um, no, so this is a. I I gave a talk on this at the um at the Dallas Summit uh recently uh for the South Central region, and because uh I go to all the summits and I speak at all the summits. And uh, leads is one of the number one topics that people are worried about. And I'm like, listen, okay, so let's let's talk about leads very uh, candidly. Like, I know you've been in this game a long time. I know you've played around with a lot of this. You may or may not have a lead flow problem. That is for sure a thing for some people. 
if I was anecdotally going to tell you what it was ever after working with hundreds and hundreds of gyms, 10% or less legitimately have a lead flow problem, right? Meaning like you're, there's something like messed up with your website. You don't have a website. There, your forms are broken, whatever, like name, name, like some, some like significant, some, some significant pillars in the lead flow, uh, funnel are just not present or broken. I'm like, okay, that's legit, right? You got to fix those. 90% are not managing what they already have um, or don't understand how to execute other strategies, meaning like they don't do any sort of cold outreach. They have no sort of referral uh, in place. They don't um, they don't do any sort of uh, intentionally run promotions. Like uh, Bring a Friend Week, which we made and put out there, is by, by is far and away the most effective organic lead generation tool that the affiliate community has ever seen. I know like more than a thousand affiliates have downloaded that. And I get an email once a week from somebody who is not a client who's like, we ran it, we netted 11, 11 clients last month. And I'm like, and, great, and that, good. I don't, over, I don't wanna oversimplify, but essentially you took Bring a Friend Week or this concept of Bring a Friend Week and you systematically just broke down a step-by-step -step process for Correct. encouraging the current members to Correct. bring someone. Right, like so, like Correct. just so everyone's understand, we're talking about like that's the low hanging fruit that balls are scraping the fucking ground. But just systematizing it for a large right. group, a large population, and that's the interesting thing. And with you guys being the affiliate world, like primarily, does it? Do you ever sit back and think like that was a moment for so many affiliates? Whereas you kick over into the other sectors of. Again, you're talking bigger money, but like the franchise world, right. and they'd be like, yeah, my fucking cleaning guy thought of that idea fucking six weeks ago. Like to them, that's like, that's such a low hanging idea. But to, again, to small business owners, and this isn't even just affiliates, this is small business America, where we get into these things as lovers of the thing, pizza, coffee, fitness, or technicians of the thing, barista, whatever, gym owner or trainer, and we open up our own business, and then we realize, fuck, like that low hanging fruit to me is a, it's a mind blow yeah. and it's incredible. Like I'm glad that that shit helps, but it's just like, it blows me away when that is like, that should win the Nobel peace prize. And I'm like, no, that's great. I'm fucking glad it worked, but my God, you need to step back and look at how is it that I didn't realize one plus one equal two. How did I not think to do that in and of myself? And again, going back to like how we got here, which is like, that was, that was, it was never a, a business minded industry, meaning like CrossFit, the machine ran that way, but they weren't in the run gyms business. They were in the, like, we do, we make trainers and we give people the opportunity to, to use the methodology. And that it was never intended that they were going to get into the, to the gym business. And to some degree, I think it was really smart, like to a large degree, I think it's really smart. Um, and, but yes, I, I would argue that people are getting hip to it. What I think is interesting is, and I've been burned by this and I, cause I've tried everything and I just, I choose to learn by experimentation. I don't think people understand how risky paid lead gen is. Meaning you're very likely to lose, very, even if you know what you're doing. You will. You will, yeah. right? It's just like this, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. I'm going to lose some ad spend, right? Yeah. Um, and I, so I, I think, and, but more importantly, there, there's low hanging fruit in front of that that is free, that, that will never die, right? That has nothing to do with Facebook algorithms and what, and what Mark Zuckerberg wants to happen inside of that platform, which is like, hey, base, understand how to do, dude, I was talking to a guy the other day. Oh, he's, uh, he's one of the uh, partners uh, for uh, Momentus, the supplement company. We just wanted to have a conversation. I was like, yeah, I'll talk to you. And this he's part of their partner program. And he's the lead uh, sales guy for Kurt. He before this, he was an Olympian Bob Sledder, a bunch of other stuff. Really sharp, dude. He's like, yeah, I sold vacuum cleaners door to door prior to do it before doing all of this. And he was like, he was like, I would sell one out of two. He was like, Industry standard would have been like one out of seven, maybe one out of 10. He was like, I would sell every other person a vacuum cleaner. And for the record, anybody that doesn't know anything about Kirby vacuum cleaners, they're not fucking cheap. 
I was going to say his Lambo right. probably says dirt devil on the back. <laughs> shit, right. right. And I was like, that's, that's bonkers right now. Some of that is you're charismatic and you just, you pick it up. Most of it is like, there's a system to sell things. Right. And people just don't have those muscles, right? They don't know how to flex those muscles on, on like how to do that. So for instance, so lead gen, right? We'll talk about that because this does solve a lot of people's problems, but you don't have to be, don't, you don't have to do it the risky way. There, there are certain ways that are in air quotes, the easier way, but you're still going to suck at it because you don't know how to do it. Right? So cold outreach, that's one, right? Like if you're going to do uh, selling over the phone, that is a skill set in and of itself, right? Bef without having somebody to come in. Right? How do you make one client into two? You sell them a referral while they're still in the sales process. Mm -hmm. Right? If you don't think you're going to mess that up the first fifty times that you try it, you're high. Right? Um, upsells and downsells. Right? Are you keeping the clients that you have? Right? People are like, I have a lead flow problem. I'm like, look at, I'm like, you have eleven percent churn, dude. What are you talking about? Like that is that is not even good by big box standards. Right. They'd be like at least nine. Right. And across the gym, I'm like five. You're doing OK. I'd like to see you at three percent. Right. Three percent. You're you're crushing. Right. Eleven. You have problems, man, like that. No amount of lead gen are going to help you with. It's funny. It's uh, CrossFit when you put it on, if you were to go ahead and chart it on subscription based uh, industries or small, let's, any kind of any kind of uh, group fitness model that's selling a subscription. It's actually, it's one of the lowest in which the base of customers needed to achieve uh, uh, minimum financial viability all the way to high level success profitability. It's the lowest out there. Think of magazine subscriptions, think of SaaS products, think of uh, whatever. It, it's one of, I mean, like you can see like massage, other industries like Massage Envies and things like that, they're selling in person, so they get you on a subscription. But massages and things like that are, are tough. Like the, even hair salons, right. I, I do a lot, like a lot of hair salons trying to go to a subscription model. It's hard because it's some, I go when I need it. Whereas fitness is right. I need this constantly. And it's, so it's, right. it's one of these things that it's just, it, when you really think about it, like you need 200, 300, whatever the number is, it's ridiculously low compared to whatever. And this actually goes to one of the other things is the people who complain and said, yeah, but listen, me and then I'm in the middle of bumfuck Ohio and there's 9,000 people here, and fitness is just not a part of the culture here. So this $4,500 really kicked me in the dick. It's like, no, 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 no. You messed up on day one when you thought you were gonna you were gonna be small town strong in Portsmouth, Ohio, and you were gonna fucking save the world by opening right. up there. You just, you have to sleep in the bed you made. I, I refuse to accept and listen to bullshit where people are like, man, but my town is just, it's not fair for me because it's not easy here. Nobody's forcing you to open a gym there. Right. And, and I'll speak, I mean, I know Dale personally, right. And so people are looking at me like, look what he's doing. And I'm like, Hey, make no mistake. That was not an easy road. And he'll be the first person to tell you that. Like that was as bumpy as the road gets. Oh yeah. Yes. And he went on shark tank and he was I'm doing the doc spark. Yeah. But like make, uh, 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 PS always fuck it up. PSKC is like, that was, that was like most affiliates in its growth trajectory and it's, and it's, it's, lifespan, right? It wasn't just like he popped that up and like, you're, you're hearing the story five years afterwards. Right. Um, and I think, and this is kind of what we tell a lot of our the affiliates that we work with. I'm like, business is hard. Like I don't, I don't, anybody that tells you otherwise is completely full of shit. Right now it can be easier. Right. And there's certain things that you can avoid, but it's still hard. Right? Like you've owned multiple businesses. I've owned multiple businesses. I have fallen flat on my face many, many times. I have lost six figures. Like sh like I have done all the things that I'm like, I'm never going to recover from this. Like it's fucking hard. I don't know what else to tell you. It doesn't have to be as hard as a lot of people are making it. Right? Now, again, going back to the perceived value thing, which is I, I know people don't like this, man, but it is just the facts of the matter. The affiliate agreement has never, ever been anything other than you get to use the name, which we can limited separate that too. from it's like limited use. It's limited use, which we can separate from like, do I think CrossFit 
uh, ha have they tried to do things for the affiliates? Do, do, can we all agree that, like, you know, to some degree, um, uh, ethically, morally, maybe that they should, like, whatever, however you want to phrase that, be like, should they? For sure. But the agreement has never, ever been anything other. And listen, I have said this so many times that it, like, it, it could not be, it, it has never been unclear about my stance on this. Like, that's all you get is the name, right? The rest is up to you. Now, if you don't like that, there are other options available to you, right? You can go join a franchise. You can not use the methodology. You can figure it out on your own. You can hire somebody else to help you. But but it was never anything other than that. And it's that may or may not change in the future. But as of right now, that's still the only thing that you're promised. Everything that they're giving us on top of that is icing on the cake. And I, I don't think most people are using it. I don't think most people are using the resources that they're providing. And that I think is a problem. I think that's a maybe a little bit of a comms issue, but I think some people just don't want to use the, I, I don't know. Like I think, I think there are a subset of affiliate owners that they're just, they just want to be pissed off about everything. Yeah. It's, I, there's a sense of entitlement. And again, I think it's, it's, I don't think it's because people are dickheads naturally like they just think they're entitled i think people think license and again the popular models are the franchises out there right the things that we all know about right. that have popped since 2010 so i think they see the success of an orange theory opening up at 400 members and don't realize the amount of cash that is required by the franchisee which is generally multiple franchisees to make that happen but look, calvin klein for example there's no less than 20 factories in china and no probably less than 100 200 300 different Fran a licensees of Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein does not make any underwear. They license the brand. That's it. Now, the one thing, and Disney's the same way. Disney doesn't make trinkets. Fucking, they license that to McDonald, whoever else makes trinkets. However, Calvin Klein, every year, will cut licensee ties with anyone who creates subpar fabrics. For everyone who's sitting there and they're like, I want CrossFit to do this, but like, would you also like CrossFit to secret shop you and walk into your Tuesday 6 p.m. class when your fuckface coach is wearing Crocs and fucking sitting there chewing gum and talking on her fucking phone? Like, you sure? Are you fucking sure? Because if you wanted to get that serious, where I want them to drive leads in, I want them to do more for it, then they're also going to make sure that what they're putting their money behind is not just going down the drain because your coach showed up at 5 a.m. for a 5 a.m. class. Well, there's two things there that are worth unpacking because they're not insignificant. One is, and I've also been on this train from day one, which is people are like quality assurance, quality assurance. And I'm like, listen, I look at it this way. Like anybody who is yelling quality assurance, like in my mind, I'm like, just like fate has would have it is like not going to make the cut, <laughs> right? Like I just, I just feel like that's just kind of how it works out all the time. I, it, also, I think just like have it a little bit more nuanced conversation. They're like, okay, so let, let's all say we're on board. Let's just magic wand it and be like, everybody's on board with quality assurance. I'm like, but you don't get to determine what quality assurance is, right? Like you, you're, you won't, you won't even get a vote. No, not at all. Right. So it's just like, should you? I, and I've told everybody, right. And I've told everybody from day one, I'm like, lo, yo, be careful with the quality assurance, man, because like, there's going to be a lot of heads that are going to roll here. Right. And I, I could say that very objectively. I've been, I've taught, I don't know how many seminars, man. And I'm not saying there's amazing people that show up to do the CrossFit seminars. Like I can on the same breath tell you, like, there's a lot of people that are not great coaches that are in route to being better coaches. Which if you if you throw quality assurance in there, there, there has to be some line in the sand when we say when I say quality assurance that says like you're not gonna make the cut. Right? Like Even you're if out. The quality like, assurance it, it creates two years from your L one, then you can apply to open up a gym because they want you to know that you got the reps in. What if just that asterisk was in there? We'd have four thousand affiliates. Six thousand right. maybe. It's, so I've always told everybody like be, you need to be real careful with that. Like and 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 I don't think there should be that right like now i personally believe right this is me which i would never enforce that to open an affiliate you should have a level three that's my personal belief right i think if you're gonna own a box or you should ha have gotten it by a certain time frame like whatever I i'm willing to budge on like how that gets executed can they be in the building because i can see a world where someone's like i've got the cash i'm gonna own it i'm not a trainer though
Like, I think this is so, a great yeah, tackle. I would even yeah. be like, I mean, I'll, so I'll, I'll tell you, so like inside of affiliate university, we have a level system, meaning like level one, level two, level three, level four affiliates, right? And there's criteria for all of those. To be a level three affiliate, throw in a bunch of the, um, the business metrics and everything else that you would want to see for somebody who's at that level. And you have to have your level three. The reason we put that in there is because if you're going to lead by example, right? And, and, it, and that could be the affiliate owner or the GM, just for the record, then somebody inside the building needs to, needs to have that technical expertise, meaning like you need to have that kind of understanding of the brand. That's what I think, right? That's my own personal objective thing that we made inside of Best Hour, right? And now that's, that's me being an idealist, right? Do I think that should be the standard across uh, the full affiliate community? No, because there's a bunch of great affiliates that are just level ones, right? That's a real thing. I'm not going to say that that's not a real thing. But again, th this is one of those things where like there was an uproar about a quality assurance and this, that's not, it's not new, by the way, you, you've been around a long time. Like oh, this yeah. has been an ongoing thing. Right. And it, and, and then it came through and everybody was just like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I, of course, right. Like I, yeah. I, Nobody was going to like it because it was going to, it was going to leave a lot of people outside the box. Right. I'm like, you're now on the outside looking in and, and, and that was the only, that's the only outcome ever when you do that. Right. Like there is no other scenario. If the numbers stayed at 13 and I was trying to run the numbers because Chip Wilson has an excerpt where he talked about when they would do secret shutters for Lululemon and there's, right. <laughs> there's nowhere, there's not 13,000 Lululemons, but the amount wow. that line item was annually to train people what to look for when they're secret shopping, to send them in there multiple times, for them to do the For everyone listening, if you think quality assurance is something you should do at the license level at 4,500, you're gonna need to probably, I don't know, seven, 10 X that cost. Cause just the, the cost for 13, cause you can't just randomly pick, you know, every odd number affiliate. You'd have to, you'd have to quality assure everyone. Right. It would have to be equal. Do you know what that line item would be from a cost perspective? It yeah. the cost the it would and guess what it would pass through to the end consumer, which is the licensee. Correct. It's just it's absolutely crazy. And I am a free market guy. I'm like let the dog shit die, let the guys killing it kill it. Like I'm not I don't care about that part. But it's also that's when we also you start bridging a gap now, and now you have another issue with the SEC. You have franchise elements coming in on that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. People again, it's just yeah, some basic that, I, some education on that franchise yeah. versus license. I think fixes a lot of the bitching. Yeah, and and again, I get I get that people don't like it. I get that some people think it, it is a bad time, and I I'm fully hip to that, dude. I know people are like this guy doesn't give a shit, and I'm like, what? Are, I'm like, no, dude. I like I literally talk to affiliate owners all day long. It is literally my entire life. Like I am well aware of how they feel about it. I'm also well aware of that. Like, okay, that's how you feel about it make your decision. Are you in or are you out? Right? Okay. Now what do we do? Now we have to solve the problem. If you're out, I understand, right? I understand that you may either don't want to pay that or you don't see the value. And like, that's your decision to make. I disagree with you. I think the value is there right now in the same breath. I'll be like, don't fucking use the methodology anymore. Now you're stealing. Right. But if you are in, now we have to go solve the problem. What does that look like? Right? Like, what's the perceived value going to be in the future? I'm like, I don't know. That's not your problem. Right. You it was never promised page. to you. Go ahead. No, it was just like, it was that, that stuff was never guaranteed. It's all just icing on the cake. And, and while I know, I know they're, I know they're working on different mechanics to, uh, to help with lead flow. Um, I don't listen, and this is not my world, but like I've, I've been in the space long enough to know, and I, and I know if people, I'm like, I don't know if that is a solvable problem, the way this whole thing is stuck together. Or like, I, I have no idea how they're going to do that. I hope they do. Listen, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm here for it, but I don't know. I don't know how that works. Like if you think about it, you have a 13,000 unique websites and we're going to drive traffic to all of them. And I'm like, that's that sounds that sounds problematic doesn't even cover it right that sounds just i don't know dude and listen maybe there's some smart people out there i'm, I'm happy to be educated and and I, and I would love nothing more for that to happen i just don't know that everybody should hold their breath for that i because let's say they do solve it 
reasonably, like let's fucking spitball here. Like how long is that going to take? Yeah. Uh, Charles Worth showed me the affiliate finder map. I hadn't seen it. I can, I can see a world in which so, uh, my HOA, this townhouse, Every year, right. I pay two twenty five a month in my HOA, but I get an itemized breakdown of the budget and where it's going. Now, I heard some silly fucking things. I wanted to actually get. I'll go to that in a second. I, I heard some silly things where people <laughs> demanded to. They wanted to know who's getting the money, where is it going. But first, I don't think that's any of your business. But like in an HOA no. scenario, what if CrossFit said this: three percent of every affiliate fee goes to a national campaign where we only drive traffic to the affiliate finder. So make sure your fucking links are right. They're not broken, right? And then let the consumer click in Charlotte, North Carolina and be like, e this one looks good. Or I like that one. Or this one has better photos. Or I like whatever it is. And then let the fucking consumer decide. But to think that they're going to drive traffic to your CrossFit Georgia or whatever, that's nuts. That's nuts. And and that's kind of my thing, right? Like, I, and again, I'm, I'm, I don't want to poo-poo the idea. I just... I'm not sure how that works be, and, and for, because of the nature. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, cause you know more about this than I do, but like most orange theories or some of these franchises, like at, when they pop up a website, they're all kind of connected through one primary link. Correct. Meaning like there's a, there's like a national website and they all kind of filter down underneath the same website. Yeah, it's, so it's thinking it's one master site and then there essentially creates a ton of squeeze pages for each okay, location. Yeah, right. Right. So that makes it easier, but that's not how this ecosystem is built. Meaning I could run a national campaign on that and I could squeeze them into the ones that I want if I geofence it and I have my kind of subdomain or whatever. And I'm like, okay, great. Right. And some of that technology is or that, uh, that verb is probably incorrect, but you get, you just get the point. I just, I, I don't know. I don't know that's a good strategy for the affiliate owner. I, I think CrossFit should pursue it. I don't know if it's a good strategy for the affiliate owner to sit around and hope they solve for them. That's that's my point, right? Like, yes, go do that. Because if you could solve it, my God, you, the company's worth a gabillion dollars, right? Straight up. Okay. But again, in the meantime, what do we do? You still got to solve your own problem. It's, and again, it's it, business owners who don't possess the chops. And it's hard. Business is hard, right, for all of us. I think they're like, they're leaning, like, please help me. Like, I need some more help. I need some more help. And it's, you know, it, that's the thing is, it's just, that's not the, that's not CrossFit's problem. Um, the one I wanted to, I wanted to pull this up here. I want to see, dude, hold, let me add you here. This was just blew my fucking mind. Um, what do I have you on? I got you as guest here. Oh God. I, he took a huge shit on me. <laughs> did he? So, oh, dude. he did a whole, he did a whole episode on, on, I, and I, listen, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to fight with him without him being there, but like, uh, cause I've been texting with him and Sue's about going on the podcast, but, God. um, oh yeah. I mean, he came, this he is came nothing to do hard with Savon. This is like, this is just a call in. And I just want to, let me know if you can hear this. Cause again, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. No, I just wanted to clarify that comment. To me, the hard part right now is not knowing where the money is going and not knowing that the people who are in charge actually care about CrossFit. To me, if 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 Greg was in charge and these, and I, I think Greg Greg would probably raise prices at some point. If it was Greg in charge, and the prices went up, there would be less of an uproar because we know. Greg gave a shit. I, again, I can't, I, it's this, because I, this is not the first one I heard where it's like, I want to know where the money's going. And part of me went to that HOA analogy where I'm like, well, the HOA shows me where all the money's going. But at the same time, I, that's where it's just, I feel this, in, there's this level of entitlement. Like where, what in fucking world do you live in that you think does I, Chipotle tell you where the fuck, like no company tells its customers, no franchisees, it the Franchisees don't even get a record of the PL of the franchisor. That right. That's not it. I just the, don't understand. This yeah, well, I think this just goes back to I, I'm not even entirely sure it's an in, entitlement. And and for the uh I don't think Savon agrees with that. I, I might be wrong, but like I've heard I, him say many times they can do whatever the fuck they want. Right. Yeah. But I think there I think there was just a a, a failure to kind of like transition you know 
my emotions to 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 the new world, right? Like the new post Greg world, which is just like, hey, those things just aren't the case anymore. And I understand why you would not feel great about it. I also know that like it doesn't matter what you think, right? Like they get to do that, and and I also think that there's just a lot of people that just presume malice right which is like in today's world that's pretty easy to do like everybody's like just all a corporate piece of shit. all corporations are greedy every yeah everybody's terrible everybody's a piece of shit and everybody's a shyster and trying to screw everybody and i, I don't i i think that has a lot to do with it right like you know and i think um you know and i'm gonna talk to, hopefully i talked to him about it on the podcast but i think savan did that to me which is like just presumed malice and be like this guy is a piece of shit right like and doesn't fucking get it and i'm like or I was just saying 1% of what all of this entails and you happen to not agree with it, which I'm totally fine with that, right? Like you don't have to fucking agree with what I say. But to say that I was just like a piece of shit, I'm like, bro, like I have, I don't know, a thousand hours on the internet talking about this, right? Like every, my, my stance is not unclear on the whole thing, right? Like, um, it, it so, was this, this, like this 90 second sound bite. Oh, you put up. Is, this, is this it? Yeah, By the way, bro. I who is and Charles Rick brought this up, and I, I'm not trying to start nothing, but who's what? this? Who's who? who's this? Hiller. Hiller. You not know who I, Hiller is? Char, he's hit. Andrew's hitting me up with it, but I like I've never. But I I, I saw oh, that, and okay. then I, I went down the rabbit hole for a second, and then I was like, he's oh, um, the, he he's calls like, he's a no YouTuber. Reps. Yeah, yeah. Well, he does a lot of stuff, and and I, I do I do think there is a place for what he does in the space. Right, like I, I, I would. He's like uh, to me. He's akin to like um, Stephen A. Jackson on ESPN. Right, he's yeah, got so a hot yeah, take oh, on yeah. this thing. He's yeah. got a hot take on something. It's entertaining. He does a good job with the edits. Wait, Stephen A. Smith, um, the black guy. Oh, uh, what did I say? Yeah, what did I you say? Said Stephen A. Jack Jackson, which someone's going to say. He was oh, Cuban sorry. Racist. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Steve. Yeah, sorry. Stephen A. Smith. Um, Stephen A. Smith, and um, and and. And I agree with some of the things that he says. I also think some of the things that he says are hot garbage, right? Like you can do both, right? Like I can agree with some things in there. Um, you know, oh, so those comments are, are full of some very, they're, dude, they're full of some very pleasant people, to be honest with you. Um, uh, some, real, <laughs> some real gems. And here's the deal, though. The, the nice thing is, though, otherwise, if you didn't make a, if you didn't make a post on it or Savan didn't make a podcast on it or whatever – where would everybody like I again I think you created like that that app Discord. That's all you did. You just created an opportunity right. for Discord, which I right. think is one of the most profound things you can do on the internet is to provide a platform for people to have their disagreements, no matter how volatile or friendly or whatever the fuck it may be. I'm all I'm obviously I'm a big fan of uh creating some little divide and giving people the opportunity to go back and forth on it. But um, yeah, I was I was in prepping for this. I was I was looking at this. I was like, oh shit, that your phone was fucking went to zero on battery oh, real quick. Dude. The ding, the ding, the ding. Oh dude, it was it was nonstop. And again, like I'm I'm happy to have a disagreement, but I, like because I think somebody else posted in there. They're like, well, I forgot what it was. It was something like, well, why wouldn't they just raise it to six thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars? And I'm like, I I don't fundamentally care to argue about things that didn't happen like who cares or just like yeah. so what like could could they have yes they did not so who cares like like I, I don't even really understand that you know to and then to say that like you should you want to know where the money goes like I, that's just not real man like now can there you could probably look at some things where and I know um they look at the, like the the two um, town halls they did. Like they're tr they're trying to do, what, they're trying what to that, communicate what's going on. Is that a Zoom so call they with did, everybody? Uh, it's not a Zoom call. It's like a webinar, right? So it's like Got you can't it. you can you can ask questions in the chat, but there's no interaction outside of that. Which for obvious reasons, that is the way that should be, you know. Um, so, so essentially, like a live broadcast, like a live like a press. Release. Yes. Yeah, it's a press release where they, you know, you can register for the webinar and get in there. Um, it doesn't really tell you how many people attend or any of that other kind of stuff, but you can ask questions in the chat. And I think it's good. Um, and I think they're, it's, it's tough, dude, right? Like, it, I think they're trying to figure out, like, what's the appropriate 
pace and frequency and amount of information to give this gigantic group of people who all want to lop your head off. Like, how do you communicate with that group on, on a, on a, on a, like, what do you do? Like, I don't know, man. I, I've never been, I'm curious on this, on you for just, uh, I've had one client one time do a town hall for a price raise. And I, I begged him mm -hmm. not to, I'm not a fan of the town hall cause I'm not, you're not, you're not press release ready. Like I, like I haven't, you, you are not battle tested on the, all the questions that are going to be asked prior. And if you crumble in front of that group, that's not good. You can't come back. There's no, there's, it's hard to come back from that. How are you, what are you, what are your thoughts on town halls for the gyms doing it when there's price raise or something to that degree? What are your thoughts? Uh, I'm okay with town halls. I'm I'm not always okay with the topic for the town hall, right? Like I think a t I think an appropriate, effective use of a town hall, sure. Um, for would for be, bad news, would be though, more like a, the bad news. I mean, maybe. So I, I think you could use it effectively for th like just a a better way to be like, hey, replace town hall with like, hey, state of the union. Be like, hey, here's what 2023 was like, everybody. Here's what we have in store for 2024, right? Sure. Um, but for a price increase no i've never recommended and we've done price increases for hundreds and hundreds of gyms i've never once recommended a town hall um i did do a town hall when i purchased a gym many years ago just to kind of get the communities together and answer some some very known questions that were going to come up right like but that's that was different it wasn't like my my current gym you know what i mean what's up guys you can address me as new daddy and um <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's gonna be a change and for the record new sheriff like, in town full disclosure i ate shit on that one ended up in a three-year lawsuit with the landlord and that one did not go well so like listen i'm i am not uh i do not have a squeaky clean background in this whole business thing i don't even think that's a thing um like i've what eaten came, my fair share of shit what came of the town hall see there's two of them why two were they just different time zones or Oh yeah, I think it was for time zones. Yeah, just because yeah. of the number of people. I don't remember what time the first one was, but I think it was a morning and an afternoon. Was there information there that maybe some people aren't aware of? Because most people have just seen the the email, the stocking or the email that went out to everybody. Right. What was the added information? Because I'm sure that town hall kind of acted. Did they have to act a little as damage control? Um, I don't know what the intent was. I don't. I don't know if there. It's no. It was definitely pre planned because they referenced it in the email. Right. So. Um, I, I think it was to elaborate on some of the things, which nobody's asking for my opinion. I think those things should have been in the email because there was relevant information in there, like good to know, which I think would have addressed um, a lot of the like what uh, the uh, so there's a couple things in there because I wrote them down yesterday because I wasn't aware of them until I watched the town hall and I was just like, I, what are they like? What's going on? I don't know. Um, one was in the price increase. They're giving everybody every LOR, a $500 um, credit to the level two. Now, if the gym owner has the level two already, they can give that to a trainer inside of their gym. So I was like, okay, that's cool. It's good to know. Um, for the OGs, there was a, uh, which is something we recommend gym owners do, uh, like meaning those 500 folks, like, and I don't remember what the breakdown was and or what the, ex who falls into which category, but there was like a two year process to bring them up, meaning, Next year, you're not going to go from 500 to 4,500. That'll happen in 2025, right? So a lot of these folks are going to get a little bit longer runway, which I think is fair. And I think that's the right move. Um, and then there was, uh, I don't remember what or what specifically was, but there was global regional adjustments to pricing structure based on currency exchange. So there was some, and I don't, I don't know what the regions were, but like some sure. of them, like fifteen hundred affiliate fee and or twenty five hundred or something like that. Those are the three big ones. And then some people had some questions that were in the weeds on, I don't remember what it was, but uh, also it 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 was not like it doesn't apply to everybody on Jan one, right? So let's just say like for instance, my license agreement comes up in October, so that that changes for me in October. Um, also. I don't remember if this was in the email, but it definitely came up the town hall. There's no more financing fee, right? So I think before it might have been a, I don't remember what the fee was, but it's there like was 20 like 20% or something. It was like, yeah. Yeah, something like, like that. Where like, there's no, there's no financing fee uh, to finance it. And there's no penalty for paying it off early, which in that instance is like, well, then don't pay it off early. Keep your cash, right? Just everybody should just pay the payments, which is good for the affiliates 
and it's good for CrossFit, quite frankly, right? Like now I'm getting recurring revenue stretched out all over the place and I got a more financially viable model now. So like that's a win-win for everybody, I think. Um, and then there was a couple of, those were the big ones that I, that I, I was just kind of like, I was doing something else for you. What I was, I was just kind of listening to it in the background and jotting down some notes. Cause I was like, there's gotta be something in here that like didn't get in the email. And there was uh, quite a few things in there. So, yeah. um, yeah. At the end of the day, it's like you get to use, you know, a methodology or I call it like a UBF unique belief of fitness. You didn't come up with, you get to use right. the largest fitness brand name in the world. And again, if it's like, well, it's not doing anything for me. Well, then be a big boy and just don't pay. Why are you paying for it then? Like, why did it take this? Right. And like, it's that economic thing. You know how like you, you and me were joking about like, oh, I did a price raise 120 to 125. Fuck off. That's not a price raise. That's, that's not real. Like you, like a legit price. Someone who's like, oh, 3000 to 4,500 annually. That's, that's the equivalent of 120 to 125 monthly. It's, I mean, it's, Correct. it's minimal. It's just, it's such a small amount. And um, I just, I just don't quite understand where, you know, from this position, I think it's gonna be like a lot of our price raise. You know, there's a little gripes, there's a loud minority, and then nothing. Most people don't cancel. Well, like, I mean, listen, dude, like, let's uh, not to bring it up because we don't need to, but like, everybody said they were gonna de affiliate after the tweet. We're at 13,000 affiliates. Like, nobody left. Yeah. Right. Like, you still, you're still, you still wanna use the methodology. Like, you're not gonna open Bob's strength and conditioning. Right. And, if you do, you're opening up yourself to a whole lot of liability legally for IP theft. If they walk in there, if they send the legal team in there and like you guys are doing Fran that day, I'm like, you're in a heap of shit, dude. Yeah, it's good you luck know? trying to think of your own thing. It's not easy. Um, it's not easy. No, it's not your easy. Own, your, your own methodology. No. Good luck. Like you're going to come up with your own brand, come up with your own way to do it. No, you're just going to be doing CrossFit without the, the SEO. And so, yeah, my big thing was just like, listen, it sucks. I get it. Right. I just don't know that it's valuable for us to sit around and bitch about it. Right. Like I get it. I, nobody likes it. Like I want to make it very, very clear. Like nobody likes it. I don't like it. Uh, full disclosure doesn't even matter to me, but like, I still don't like it. Right. I know one day I'm going to have to pay that, you know, for that instance, like one day in the, in the future, mine's going to go up 4,500 bucks. Okay. I, I have to plan for that. Right? And also like going back to Legion, like they're, they're what it, for me, what it exposes it. And, and I can say this cause I've been that guy. Like I've been every variation of a gym owner pr almost. Right. Cause like, you're not getting leads. You're not helping me out. I'm like, you do know that you can go manipulate your own SEO, right? Like you could write blog articles. You can do, you can do a whole heaping pile of things that would increase your exposure online right? That are not going to cost you nearly what it's going to cost you if they were to double or triple your affiliate fees. And that's kind of, that's kind of what I, I that was all I'm trying to get people to, to open up to is just like, yo, for most affiliate owners, myself included, there's a ton of shit that we still don't know how to do. And as long as everybody keeps their head in the sand, we will continue to be vulnerable to all sorts of stuff, right? So forget what's going on at HQ, just market stuff that's happening. Like, Dude, that train's coming down the tracks. We don't even know what it is. But like if you're not armed with the requisite skill sets, you're gonna be in deep shit. So like create a financially viable model. Like really learn to dial up your coaching staff and get a good team so that so the service is fucking over the moon. Understand how to do referrals, understand how to do cold read. If you've been around for 10 years, I guarantee you you have an email list that is a minimum of 3,500 people long. And if you're not using that, start there right? Just start there, put together a real shitty plan of reaching out to all 3,500 people over the next 12 months. You'll learn some shit, right? About like emailing people and what they respond to and what they don't respond to and what you should say if they're, if they're really shitty to you. Like those are all things that are available to you, right? If you don't understand what your conversion rate is from lead to contact to, to convert, start there. You'll find some ways, you'll find out some things that you suck at. Fix that. A real quick tactic for everybody. If you go to Google and put into Google, Google search console, go there, click on that. It's, everybody has it. You'll, uh, you'll have to register a URL, which is your website. Register a URL. It will literally show you the top 20 search terms that put people 
to your website. It literally will backlog. It goes back a year, I think, uh, and shows you all the data of this is how people are finding it. If CrossFit's or CrossFit's near me or CrossFit San Diego, whatever the fuck, is not in the top 10, you have a business case, a solid case for, yeah, you might, my, minus the methodology, you, you might right. not benefit from the name. Um, however, I, so even one of my clients, and she's financially very successful, hemming and hawing, just kind of about the way it was done, the timing and all that. And I, I said, I'm like, Google search console, do it. She's like, holy fuck. It's the top three search terms for my website are CrossFit related. I'm like, sounds like a pretty good deal then. I don't know. Yeah. And, and you can, and m most people don't know this too. Like, so you can, you can put together a long-term strategy for this in the form of like how you put keywords into your website, blog strategies, all these things that you can start creeping up over time. Right. I don't know if this is exactly correct anymore, but if you were to make it to the top spot in those keywords, the top spot in a keyword search gets 70% of the traffic, 70 percent meaning like if there's 20 crossfits in your space and you are somehow able to strategize your way into the top spot for crossfits near me you will get 70 percent of the search traffic coming to your website and you got to make sure that your website doesn't look like a big bag of ass right like it's yeah it's and again it you know I also think CrossFit's a titanic of a business. It will take them years to really develop a ton of the business helping tools, not forcing them to do it, right? Because it's not a franchise, but best practices put together. You know, I think they're going to be able to leverage guys like like what you guys are doing with Affiliate U, I think with Coop or whoever, whoever's out there. And I think they're going to be able to leverage that stuff, hopefully, to create some good business. I know they're starting. And there's the playbook. I know that came out recently in the past two years or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's... Um, Guys, it, it just, it's when you, you can't just retro dating stuff like this for a company that large takes forever. There's gym owners right now who have 135 members and they still haven't created that one Excel sheet that they thought would be really helpful to help them track their blah, 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 blah in a year. And you're a 125 member gym, let alone a giant $300 million valuation company. To give some context for some of the problems they're trying, and this is not me like, uh, doing any sort of defense like this is just the nature of what they're dealing with right so and i found this out and this is public because they've talked about it at some of the summits um do you remember all the journal articles right absolutely dude i don't know how many of those there are but thousands probably none of those have any sort of key, like seo attachment to them right so and what i mean by that is like they're trying to like, they were just like, Oh my God, we're sitting on gold with regard to search engine content that we have to somehow figure out to give, uh, to, to rebuild in some manner that has some sort of attribution to the website. I'm like, how long do you think that takes? Right? Like thousands of articles, right? Like, like CrossFit should be like the number one thing that pops up if you were to Google deadlift for God's sake, if that, if that was the case. Right. But they're just like, yeah, it wasn't done because that's not how it was built. And they're like, but we're trying to fix it. Like, we don't know how long it takes, but like, that's what we're going to try to do. And I'm like, I get it. I don't get it. Meaning like, I have no idea what that entails, but I understand why you would want to do that and how big of a problem that is. But like, I think that is, I think some people don't understand the scope of the problem they're trying to solve, which is, you know, maybe something to consider, right? Forget how you feel about it, but like, shit, that's a, <laughs> that's a big fucking problem, man. Like the, the whole thing, like, how do you, how do you take that and then move it forward? Like there, there is no easy route for that. Um, yeah, I don't know. And it, I mean, it's, it's tough. Affiliate owners, there's a lot of, and small business, again, it's not affiliate owners, it's small business owners. Many of them are of entrepreneurial tendencies, but they truly don't love the idea of problem solving. And there's some of them are afraid to get it wrong. And like we were talking about with the ad spend, like anyone who's decent at ad spend knows I'm going to burn a ton of money as long as I have an ROI over a certain period. And you got you just got to be willing to be wrong and willing to accept that this is not going to be easy. But that's the thing. It's so funny because fitness and all the workouts and everything they tell the clients is very opposite of what I feel some of the complaining on this is. Like it's going to be hard and it's going to hurt and it's not good. You're not going to get results tomorrow. And all these things, right. I feel like we could hear a lot of these guys say to a client, 
Yet when it comes in this one scenario, I feel like very hypocritical is kind of, or like you're just, you're too emotional right now. Take a beat, zoom out for a second and come back to this in two weeks. Like, yeah, I really wish I could delete that comment. I kind of sounded like a whiny little (laughs) bitch, you know, like, um, you know, at at, at the end of the day, I think, um, I think most people are going to stay. I think they should stay. I think it's a fair price, you know, even if they added nothing, I think it would still be fair. We're like, I just I do. Um, and I think that CrossFit's trying to figure it out. I think everybody is rightfully upset about a lot of things. And then I think they should go back to work. I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I don't really know how else to feel or how else to react about that. But that's what I told all the gyms that we work with. And I'm like, yo, I understand that you might not like it. Financially speaking, 1% of you, this might be problematic. We'll help you solve that. Don't worry about it. Now go back to work, right? Because none of this is helpful, right? Yep. And at the end of the day, it it actually doesn't impact you, right? Is it fair? I don't know. We're never going to get an answer on that. Like, I don't even know what the value of that conversation is other than continuing to like help CrossFit move the ball down the field. I'm like, okay, great. There's plenty of people having that conversation. The average affiliate owner, go back to work, man. Like, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. Chase, where can people, if they want to learn more about you, Affiliate You, Best Hour, where can they reach out, brother? Yeah, man. I mean, the podcast on all podcast uh, podcast platforms, Best Hour of Their Day, YouTube, put a ton of content out there, um, besthour.com. Um, any coaches that are looking for coach development, uh, maybe four months ago, we launched uh, The Knowledge, which you can find that app in the App Store. That is consumption. The Knowledge Pro will be, op- will be online in January. Um, But that is all things coaching inside of the affiliate, right? Like how to do progressions, conceptual conversations, how to lay out your classes, like think YouTube, but just for for just for coaching inside of the affiliate. Um, And uh, we'll be rolling that out in multiple languages in uh, the next uh, couple of months. But the Knowledge Pro, you get to get in there and you get to get feedback on videos, right? So there's a upper level there of uh, integration or uh, interaction there as well. Quite a real quick question, sidebar of that. With the knowledge, is there anything, Was did you have to go to CrossFit? Because obviously that, that's probably somewhat of a slight conflict of interest since they sell education, you're a provider of the education, and then you've got the app. Was there was there a conversation that had to be had? Or is the content uh, no, just, different to what they teach in the L1, 2, it's, 3? No, I mean, it's, so think about like, we're we're teaching like, hey, if you want to run if you, if you want to run, like run your class better, like if you want to like think in the affiliate, like, Hey, we're teaching how to do things better in the affiliate. Um, the CrossFit is in the, the CrossFit is in the certification game. Like we have no intention of getting a certification game. I don't want to touch certifications. Like I don't care about any of that stuff. Like it's just a resource. Like if you just want to know how to do Got this it. thing better, get in there, consume it. It's in small bite-sized chunks delivered to you daily, five days a week, uh, five to seven minutes, get in there watch it and walk back out on the floor and do it. Good shit. Good shit. Brother, I appreciate you taking the time out today. Thank you very much. Yeah, dude, I appreciate it.